Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you how to transform a person's face into the look of Gene Simmons from KISS. For your convenience and to save time, I provided this image that we'll use to create the makeup around the eyes. Its link is located in the video description or project files. Open a photo you'd like to use. I downloaded this one from Shutterstock.com. Make sure the person is facing you straight on. Click the icon at the upper right of the Layers panel and click Duplicate Layer. Open the Document List and click New. Type in Displacement and click OK. Displacement maps generally look best when they're blurred. So go to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. I'll blur it 5 pixels. You may need to adjust this amount based on the size and resolution of your photo. Make the blur look similar to this example. Then click OK. Go to File and Save As. Click Desktop and save it as a PSD file. Then click Save. If you see this warning, click OK. Click the small X on the right of the Displacement tab to close the file. Make two copies of the photo by pressing Ctrl or Command J twice. We'll remove all the color from the top layer by pressing Ctrl or Command Shift U. Then change its blend mode to Multiply. Click off the eyeball next to the layer to hide it and click the thumbnail of layer 1 to make it active. We need to make a selection around the face to isolate it for the white makeup. There are many ways to make selections, but for this example, I'll use the pen tool. I did an entire tutorial on how to use this tool, so I won't be going over it in depth here. I'll create pads that follow the contours of the edge of the face and hairline. When you reach the original starting point of a path, you'll see a small circle. This tells you that if you click on the point, you'll close the work path. Click the Paths tab to open the panel. If you don't see it, go to Window and Paths. Control click or Command click on the thumbnail to make the work path into a selection. Go to Select and Refine Edge. Check Smart Radius and brush over the edge of the hairline and forehead. Smart Radius automatically adapted the radius to the image edges, thereby including the hair along the edges with the selection. Output it as a selection and click OK. Go to Select and Save Selection. Type in Face Shape and click OK or press Enter or Return. To deselect it, Press Ctrl or Command D. Open the Layers panel and open the Eye Makeup shapes that I provided. To get it into your photo document, press V to open your Move tool and drag the Eye Makeup shapes onto the tab of your photo. Without releasing your mouse or pen, drag it down onto the image and then release. To resize and position it onto the face, Open your Transform tool by pressing Ctrl or Command T. Temporarily reduce its opacity so you can see through it. Drag it to the center and to resize it, go to a corner and when you see a diagonal double arrow, press and hold Alt or Option plus Shift as you drag it in or out. Center it over the nose and position the points on the bottom a bit below the nose. If you want to warp the shape, click the Warp Transform icon and drag the lines and points on the grid to warp the shape. To ensure that the shapes will remain symmetrical to each other, wherever you place the point on one side of the grid, mirror the position of the point on the other side of the grid. To accept it, Click the check mark at the top or press Enter or Return. Since I'll keep the original shape, 
I'll undo the warp by pressing Ctrl or Command Z. Increase the opacity back to 100% and change its blend mode to soft light. Next, we'll add makeup to the lips. Press Z to open your zoom tool and drag it over the mouth of your subject. To move it, press and hold the space bar on your keyboard as you drag your image. This time, I'll use the pencil tool. I'll make the size 5 pixels and the hardness 100%. I'll press Enter or Return and the F5 key at the top of my keyboard to open the brush presets. I'll make sure none of the settings are checked except smoothing. Then I'll press F5 again to close the panel. I'll click the Quick Mask icon so I can draw a quick mask. I'll draw around the edge of the lips and when I get to a corner, I'll release my cursor, go to here, and shift click on the image to make a straight line. I'll release my cursor, go to the edge of the bottom lip, and shift click again to make another straight line. I'll continue to follow the edge of the lips, and when I get to here, I'll make another dagger like shape. To fill it in, I'll open my paint bucket tool and click inside the quick mask. I'll press Q to make it into a selection and invert the selection by pressing Ctrl or Command Shift I. I'll fill it with black and since black is the foreground color, I'll press Alt or Option plus Delete. Then I'll deselect it. To fit the entire document onto your canvas, press Ctrl or Command Zero. Next, we'll make the widow's peak at the top of the forehead. Open the Channels panel. If you don't see it, go to Window and Channels. Control click or Command click on the thumbnail of the face shape to make it into a selection. Open back up your Layers panel and press Q to see the selection as a quick mask. With your Pen tool, make a V shape over the center of the forehead overlapping the hair. To reposition the lowest anchor point, press and hold Control or Command as you drag it. Let's bend in each side of the V. Go to the middle of a side and Alt click or Option click directly on the path to add an anchor point. Then hold down Control or Command as you drag it in. Repeat these steps on the other side. Click at the top left of the quick mask to make another anchor point and continue to do this around the head until you've reached the first anchor point to close the path. Open your Paths panel and Control click or Command click on the thumbnail of the work path to make it into a selection. Press Q to make the selection into a quick mask and then deselect it. Press Q again to convert this new shape into a selection. Open back up your Layers panel and fill the selection with black. Then deselect it. Make Layer 1 active. Click the Adjustment Layer icon and click Hue Saturation. Click the Clipping Mask icon to clip or restrict the adjustment layer to effect just the one layer beneath it in the Layers panel. If we didn't clip the adjustment layer, it would effect all the layers beneath it in the Layers panel. Drag the saturation all the way to the left to remove all the color. To bring back some of the color, Reduce its opacity to 80%. Click the Adjustment Layer icon and choose Levels. Clip it and brighten the input midtones to 1.16. Make the Dark Makeup layer active. We're ready to displace it so it'll wrap around the contours of the face. Go to Filter, Distort, and Displace. Make the horizontal and vertical scales 5, stretch to fit, and repeat edge pixels. Then click OK. Click the displacement file that you saved at the beginning and click Open. The dark makeup made a subtle but important shift. You'll see that it's now wrapping itself around the contours. To remove the dark shapes under the nose, open your zoom tool and zoom into it. Open your Eraser tool 
and choose a small point size with a hardness of 0%. Brush over the dark points under the nose to erase them, as well as the inside of the eyes. Then, fit your entire image back onto your canvas. Drag the dark makeup layer to the top of your layers panel. Make the black and white face layer visible and active. At this point, your image should look approximately as dark as this. However, since this layer will be used for the black makeup, we need to make it even darker and have more contrast. Click the adjustment layer and click Brightness Contrast. Clip it, and for this image, I'll make the brightness minus 62 and the contrast 78. Experiment with your image to make it look similar to this. Next, we'll create the white makeup. Control click or command click on the thumbnail of the dark makeup to make the shapes into a selection. Make the black and white layer active. Click the layer mask icon to make a layer mask of the selection next to the black and white layer. Open the channels panel. Control click or command click on the thumbnail of the face shape to make a selection of its shape. Open back up the layers panel and press Control Alt or Command Option as you click on the thumbnail of the dark makeup layer to add its shape to the selection. Make layer 1 active and click the layer mask icon to make a layer mask of the selection next to it. Lastly, we'll remove some of the skin color from the dark makeup. First, scroll to the top of the layers panel and make the top layer active. Then, make a composite snapshot of your image by pressing Control Shift Alt E on Windows or Command Shift Option E on a Mac. Go to this layer mask and press and hold Alt or Option as you drag a copy of it next to the composite snapshot. Click the adjustment layer icon and click Hue Saturation. Clip it and reduce the saturation to minus 40. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.